Hello, everybody, and good evening, wherever you are today. We're here with the Lord. You can have the natural and the supernatural and just be as pleasant and as peaceful in ministry as needed. And we are very peaceful and protected by the Lord. But I am i can't help it. God had to teach me about misogyny. I was never around it, so I didn't know that I was being, you know, that I triggered it in certain ways until the LP and the charismatic and the Deep Southwest primarily, and then Celebrity afterwards. I just had never thought of it. I don't think like that. I was raised so respectfully by men, Christian men who were gentlemen, real people. I dealt with many men, board members, friends, through the years, and I, all races. I never had even to think that I'd be identified by some, you know, targeting kind of people groups as uh, the female. I never thought of that. I never treat people like that. I just don't do it. So it caught me off guard. And now I realize that God wanted that because I was immune. I was, uh, I wasn't in denial, but I had never needed to be liberated. I didn't feel the need to be a feminist. I still don't. I feel like that I'd, I'd been raised healthily and without dysfunction. And now I can understand why there are feminists and why there are women's libbers through the years because the LP is giant. It's the patriarchy, matriarchy in a subculture in the churches as well as in real life. I'm going to talk about the churches, the ministry, in case you are one or you need to know about it to train on it. So the patriarchy cannot be identified, misidentified, or stereotyped just because they're men or white men, black men, or brown men. You can't say, well, just because they have a certain personality type, a patriarch, which is an identifiable personality trait, you know, type, or a matriarch, patriarch, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's really pretty right. There's stable anchor dispositions, and we need a lot in ministry and family. It's when they get false teaching, error, go into big shot, occult, or get into false defaming character, throwing their weight around cronyism. That's the turf we're talking about. But I'm not talking to the secular people. We're talking to the Christ followers. Because there's nowhere to go if you really need to get to church, to have ministry, just to be with God away from the stress of life the pressures of life, and you can't go, you might be trapped in an area that is surrounded by Levitical patriarchy, and you don't fit there, you know, you're not the same kind, made spiritually DNA, and they will react to that as a trigger. So we're trying to give people solace, comfort, understanding, and then to deliver the abusive and racist and targeting misogyny as well as occult and many or most of Levitical patriarchy, and that's why I'm doing it. It's withstood this person as a human minister, human's ministry, a prophetic office, and an apostle. After only, it started to find me when I studied Kara's, the prophetic movement starting in Virginia in the late 90s, mid-90s. No one told me about it. I could not have foreseen that church, where they move in the gifts, the Holy Spirit, they believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, all the different things, laying out in the power, all that type of thing, or not laying out in the power, doesn't have to, but they believe that it's all white men authority. Basically, it is the old-timey covering shepherding movement many times. From the Deep South New One magazine, mixed in with the coming over from the I believe, after I've studied it for these years, decades, the seer movements, it comes over from perhaps the monk who had the women, anti-woman, witch-watching Inquisition, who wrote the book, Baleus Maleficarum, over in Western Europe. Somehow it migrated and translated maybe to the Church of England. Not all of it, but whoever came over, the reason I'm saying it, settled in the Mayflower in Plymouth Rock and not all of them were like that most of them were high quality most of them were real decent you know good founding fathers healthy Christians but there was a rim there was a type of subgroup of lower caliber false religion who had ought against and there was a group I'm getting out of the car because the signal has been a big deal today and they came over with the you know Christian faith I think 
but within that group some of them part of them had you know, here we go we switched our cell phone towers anyway so along with the Puritans the founding fathers of great quality and we're grateful for them and their teaching then we also find a subgroup that comes out of that the Puritans or something that were the whelp who are the uh, ones of the founding of the accuser against women misogynist demonic occult targeting women and had the Salem witch trial so I think we got a combo right now maybe with a lot of patriarchy the patriarchy of cronyism you know the good old boy type thing good old person systems all mixed in and then mercenary a lot of achievement mercenary because of the move of God in the society and culture Western European and around the world plus media so we're pro-humans, but we're pro-watching out because this is destroying America. It's destroying our nation and the churches. Now, you can get in your famous clique and your clan and your club and be immune and just get locked into that. And you won't know it, but I was not sent to be a part of the clan, clique, club, and system. I'm sent on behalf of the everyday person, the visitor, and I never knew that I would be targeted as a female because I don't think like that. Like I said, my dad was a great dad. They're hands-on parents and men I'm, I've had friends with men I have a men's ministry a human's ministry a human's ministry all my life it's never been a ladies ministry a women's ministry but because there's no teaching and no one knew me I get defined by this stereotype of the generations especially Levitical patriarchy so we're trying to break a prototype and a stronghold of evil eye witch watching and accusation demonic targeting and praying against something like the Eli Templi priesthood first Samuel is a giant giant big deal in light of that right before the Ichabod God removed that priesthood entirely that whole family of priests why in first Samuel you can see the tough experienced gender jaundiced and also cynical older priest the man priest the Levitical patriarch of the area and everybody knew him and he had two misogynist user playboy sons Hophni and Phineas and he did nothing they were known everybody knew except Eli he was in denial everybody knew the women would be the the two associate ministers his pastors his sons slept with the women that came to the church and pressured people for the offering which they kept themselves and that false authority that witchcraft using people when people are trying to go to the Lord's house is quite an abomination and an anathema to the cause of the Holy Spirit and so the Eli he was older put on weight accomplished but he'd seen it all he'd heard it all he was compassion fatigue why because he didn't have compassion he didn't respect the women or he would have fussed at his son, set him down, and said, Don't you dare disrespect God's people. Don't treat them like your commodity, your property. But that still goes on. I call it the boys, good old, boys will be boys, playtime, Demas and old Eli will be here forever club. And look what brought him down, an anonymous prophet that came out of nowhere. They were, they were in the area, and everybody said because they knew people know what's going on the scuttlebutt how they used and abused people and the money and they said at that time the offering of the Lord was despised in that day because of Eli's two sons their nickname was the sons of the devil and in my opinion I've lived in this earth all these years started in serving the Lord in the 70s being sent to study the body had my own ministry called in 86 right when the Jim Baker and Jim scandals Jim Baker and Jimmy Swaggart scandals happened and I've seen the fallout ever since it's about money and women usually and I've seen it and the offering of the Lord has been despised in this day of where we live ever since I believe the same caliber of evil eye witchcraft in denial playtime using misogynist demonic occult warfare that says it's God's people in the Hebrews 1025 we own the turf where the club is gonna go it's gonna go so you have still time to lessen your grip 
to turn back, to go toward the Lord, and to, do, you know, the issue is that in light of today and studying Eli, God put on this in my heart in like 2012 in Dallas. I've written articles about this. All right, Eli saw types. He didn't see humans. He'd seen so much, had wear and tear warfare. He saw an it when Hannah, the lone woman without her man beside her, showed up at the temple weeping and grieving because she was persecuted for being barren by the other wife. And Elkanah, her husband, loved her more than the other wife. He said, sure, go, to, go honey. If it'll make you feel better, go to God's house, the temple. So Hannah is there, and she shows up grieving and weeping, and instead of having compassion, the evil-eyed, tired, belabored priest who had the call to get up and say, oh, what's wrong, to represent the Lord himself to the lone human who happened to be a female, was instead gender jaundiced, put upon, didn't feel like it, and he said, the first thing that came out of his heart when he saw that woman, the grieving woman, he said, oh, she's drunk. As in accusing her for weeping. Accusing by biased stereotype. Gender biased. So we think, well, would he have done it had it been a man like that? No. He'd have got, oh, what's wrong, fella? Would he have done it if her man had been beside her? And she was crying, no. He wouldn't do it. This is what we have seen. This is what we're targeting now in real life. I cannot tell you how I've never felt like the female alone. I've never felt like it was tragic. I never felt like by myself. I didn't feel needy. I don't feel, I feel like I'm in God. I know God so well, the Holy Spirit. I had such happy, I think of my dad all the time, quality men that I, you know, that are real people that are not like that. I feel really content. I've felt contented. I haven't felt like, oh, I'm a woman. I'm a woman. I feel weaker. I feel, oh, needy. No, no, no. I feel like I'm a human spying out like a Daniel. It was like a Daniel taken down into Babylon ministry, witchcraft and dysfunction for 15 years. And for such a time as this, I got out and was living to talk about it and to defrag it and train it. But I can't help but remember it. I can't help but having, wow, I've never seen a cult. I've never seen women treated so badly. I had never been treated like that. So I had to think, what is this? I didn't even think it was about be, me being a female showing up till down there. Never. I don't think like that. I think like myself. I myself, my mom and dad were smart. My grandmother taught Bible, had her own ministry. Her husband was in business. My mother taught. But we were, everybody I know that I hang with are real people. And you say, yeah, they're man or female, but you're, they're human first. So we think there is quite a teaching, educational background, wholesome difference between us and that Eli targeting false priesthood so when you analyze the quickening of what is God saying in the first chapter that book of Samuel he's talking to the he's showing what the fruit of the leaders were right before he took them out and brought it down and set in a new government the first prophet of the nation of Israel was Hannah who he didn't recognize as important as significant he was dull of discernment jaded, proud, and so there she was, and she turned about, out to be the mother who gave birth to the first prophet of the nation of Israel. So don't give up, people. Don't give up males or females if you feel targeted. But I will say this. This, is never, this has been a special time for me because I got to escape that. I got to escape that region of dysfunction in Christian tongue talk and ministry. The put upon, easily put upon, snap judgment, stereotyping, whatever it playtime, Demas and Eli mostly. The remnant here and there, but really the other. And because of that, I got to get out. But what about the people who don't get out? I feel for you. 
I know how I've been there so I can be here for you to encourage you, give you hope, even give you counsel or ideas if you need help or help you start your own ministry somewhere. But the issue, my compassion is not fatigued. I'm not part of the good old boys club or the good old girls club, the click clan elite. I'm not. Where is that supposed to be found in the New Testament? Where is that? That now it's more, you got to pass the muster, the type, the vibe, the look, the presence to carry the quality that fits in order you to be accepted in that kind of beloved. It's rigorous now. So I believe God has moved upon the whelp and it is up to them what they will do about the future if they will be here in their present form, teaching form. I believe that door is closed. That's why I'm out. I don't have to live that. I, have under, I understand enough to train and defrag them, help them. But Levitical patriarchy is the master spirit in our nation from the, I think, the white patriarchy. But my call is the church, so it's in the church as the Christian whelp. And there's reason I speak this because this is a new move. It's not theirs. And they think they own Holy Spirit book of acts and ministry that moves in the gifts they think but they're not it is not to be anybody's move not mine nor theirs so we're out of that i'm not a charismatic from 2012 because of all this but it's a it's a shame that we can't even go and get with the holy spirit and visit other churches without demonic occult white witchcraft warfare demeaning defiling targeting of females and males certain kinds of males and probably dark-skinned people as well so we were put god put me on a shelf his shelf since 19 late 1990s when i started to get really attacked i also had abuse and went through a great you know forgiveness and trying to forgive people but i knew i had never been in this realm this spiritual realm and this is where I got the call to be this strong and refined in the fires and dysfunction of Dallas the perception of how giant this is in America in the in the stronghold so I can recognize it but I'm I'm not I'm apart from it but I I miss Holy Spirit I miss deep Holy Spirit because their people are filled with whelp their people will target a lone woman, a lone person who's not a whelp, and pick them out and say they're the devil himself, a witch, a warlock, a fellow Christian, because they're bred, steeped in the Kool-Aid of this movement. Now, I will tell you another day, I keep playing on it, but I'm going to tell you about the time I walked to the front of the church in DFW and they didn't even know me grabbed me by the arm, put my arm in the woman's hand, you know, the lone woman, and she started to read me out in false authority for being unsubmitted to their, that's, that's called narcissism. Do we feel that there may be narcissism in this movement? Narcissism, there's no other move of God except us. So we're out of there to teach you there is a move. You can have your own move. You can be whatever that is land protective our turf our kind zeal for the wrong thing feel free that's your choice but i'm not in it so i'm teaching about covering there is no such covering saying is covering in the bible there's chain of command in the new testament first church i google that and it said god's love covers a multitude of sin and errors and omissions god's love covers to have the love of god and god's love covers sin we will do that we'll pray it's prayer covering so we're Ephesians 5.21, like the Bible says, mutual submitted in the fear of the Lord, but the LP, the nosy, witch-watching, accusing, far-off targeting elite will go after somebody like this who is not their brand because of false teaching and all-wise humanism, occult, domination, or whatever, spoiled. So that's why I teach this formally, because I am a perceiver, discerner, prophet, and I pick this up. My gosh, it's tough. But I didn't ever have to be this strong until them, and I guess I want to thank God for it. 
Thank God I'm still human, not perfect. We're here on the, we're here out of the systems. We're not into performance, but we're here as a resource for those who may need some of this. It's an opt-in when you need it, divine appointment type ministry. I do counsel. I do white, black, and brown. People who are human Christian ministers, I do that. I'll talk theology, stir up your creative gift, whatever it is you need. And that's all we want to do. I don't have to be out in the front. I don't want to be out in this stuff. I don't want to be out in the system. I want to be myself. So I can do Skype. I can do one-to-one. -one. I do counsel, like I said. And I have an area-wide networking, you know, that we, and one reason I love to go to church, I have, I'll refer people who are strangers, who are new people, to churches when I feel that might be a better church fit than them, black and white. So let me invite, you know, you can let me, ask me to attend your church or something. But the issue, we are not desperate for our move of God to happen. We are not desperate. But I feel so concerned, too concerned, not to address this horrible false teaching because when God moves there's not going to be proletarians there's not going to be big I little you it's not going to be systems and overseeing and all your people see if it, the, the top pastor usually can be pretty firm but he doesn't know or she doesn't know what the people and elders are doing with false doctrine down to the rest of us that's the message not to hurt people but to alarm people and wake it up so when I teach the topic, I heard the witch watcher call my name. It is very experienced and very true in the fact that when I have only shared a few times where I got literally jumped in public, targeted by prayer, I just, I, it was unfathomable to think that is really now what we're dealing with. The supernatural, spooky, flaky, of dark demonic theology now saying oh we're the Holy Spirit crowd we're the book of Acts crowd so like I said we're for them and I don't want to belabor this I'm trying to get this all out in my testimony because it's fatiguing and I have a lot more to do right now get the college up and also make progress in other areas my own areas personal areas as well which is good I'm happy but because I do think of people I really always think of other people I really do I think Wow, I wish I could spare people from some of this stuff. I wish I could train people so I don't, they don't have to be that way and get God mad at them, but also don't have to go to that and go through it and figure out what it was by themselves and alone. And if you're a pastor, especially if you're in the top where they know who you are and they can target you, I understand that turf. So I'm here as a, a private network, you know, behind the scenes or in front of the scenes, whatever you need. One of the last things I do, and I don't want to make it for everybody, but I'll do it if the Lord says, I will visit your church, and I will let you know what the Lord says about it. Because I can pick up all the stuff that the Lord is, if that's in there, the Lord will show me. But I can encourage you, but I can also help you perceive what the Lord is saying about your church. And I will give you the word of the Lord and present it, but it's your choice to do it or not, because I don't want to be your boss I want it to be a Selah. But I really thought, for some reason, out of the blue, why would a Baptist, Southern Baptist pastor's daughter, who went through the Holy Spirit moves for 47 years, come out on the other side, just got quit, sick, you know, tired of being divined and probed by grouchy, loveless people? Why would she have to do this? And it's for to help people, because if I didn't know it, many of you didn't know what's going on maybe you don't even know why you're feeling this way while you're you don't even know you're getting pummeled by false witness and false people word curses from your people from other christians from any realm you don't know because you're online a lot and i know that turf but yet right now i am not moved by it i am not moved by it. i'm joyful more joyful than ever looking forward to what god is telling me to do to get our business side out and to go for it, to get up from the grassroots dysfunction, which I am inside, but he's got to manifest it, what the next level of, you know, lay of the land is. And so we're around Charlotte, and we go to Waverly, we can meet there, South Park, and here, Fort Mill, anywhere else. 
online that God is good and I'm going to boast in Him. I'm going to boast in the Lord my God who has kept me, saved me, protected me, filled me, given me great hope and joy, and kept my youth renewed as the eagle. Really, I don't feel any. I'm going to give God, I want to tell people, you need to start in your 20s or whenever you get this now, start working for the later. Because I did. At the, and so I feel, I mean, I, I had some really uphill big battles lately in the last year that I couldn't focus on myself like I needed to. But that's what we're, we, we want. But I will tell you, I prepared by getting the scriptures and eating well and working out all my life. And I claim the scripture that, a couple of them, that my youth would be as renewed as the eagle, overcoming and soaring. I claim that Moses, let's see, what is it? Moses was 120 years and his eyes had not dimmed nor his natural force abated. And God has kept me. And I have just, I feel as young as I did, inner age, may not look it, but inner age, I feel and act, think 28. I really do. I just feel ageless. I feel because of God's grace. Plus he needs a person who's been around for the future church. If you feel similar to this and you need encouragement or networking or friends, just let me know because we need more people like this old and in. I really want to have, I call them experts. Senior experts, not senior sit. You know, it can be you inside. See, I go by inner age. I don't go by TV or Hollywood. I go by who you are on the inside. Some people are younger and older acting and more mature than somebody who's chronologically older. Or some people can be old and really young acting really younger than, you know, it depends on who you are from the inside out. And that's what I'm looking for. That's how we deal with it over here. So God is good as mercy endures and let us sigh ah, a relief, a praise sigh. I am praising a praise sigh after what I have been I mean, overcome, what God has done for me and through me and in me with the power of God, the Most High God. I just want to give Him honor. So we're going to try to finish out the um, last roll or two on the testimony of my supernatural, strange, and weird journey studying the body of Christ since age 24 to now. I heard, I like the name, I heard the witch watcher call my name. <laughs> So we're going to finish out this series, and then I'm asking God, now, where do I begin again? You know, I've just gotten out of that, so now we're trying to get to the next place. One of the things, when you under, when you uncover a stronghold, these are many strongholds, it can kill you, or it can make you stronger. And you study their doctrine, and you turn to God, and you know what to do, and He gives you the grace to not be moved by it. And I had to know, to be in a national level... And a, a national level where all this is a new giant mega proportion in authority, I can't be moved by this stuff. I cannot be moved. And that was what I had to grow in. So we are grateful for Holy Spirit, for all the good people, for the remnant. And we give God praise. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go in and work out right now. And I'm going to tell you that I'm giving a praise sigh. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I really am. God is good. Have a great evening. This is Tevo DRC signing off for now. God bless.